Hey guys, it's Jordan Elizabeth Gelber, and we are back with another episode of the Bold and Blonde Update, and we're bringing back the amazing Brando Crawford, who was here not too long ago, to give you part two of his amazing story, because he's just one of the coolest people that I know. So, Brando, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Jordan. Uh, thank you for, uh, this is the coolest thing, the fact that we can communicate with people from across the the nation i'm still not over it <laughs> it's like i'm still like a <laughs> yeah. child of wonder in my eyes like wow someone's in new york and i'm talking to them face to face the equivalent of no right just going off of what you're saying it's like it, right it's the equivalent of uh it, because we're so limited as people you know with with everything that's going on it's it's just cool that the like the people that i would be like i want to have a business meeting with you i want to mm -hmm. i want to meet and talk over ideas um, like I never felt, even though this existed before, I never felt comfortable doing this. Like I would have to wait like until I was in the area and I don't know, this is just, this is the one silver lining from everything. No, I think to your point, like we're both entrepreneurs. We're not just creative entrepreneurs. We have other forms of business. And I think that that would be something really exciting to showcase the fact that you and I, um, have been able to straddle this line. That's one of the reasons I was so excited to talk to you on multiple facets. It's because of the fact that you're a very well-rounded individual. And like you said, though, about Zoom, which I think is funny, I feel like Zoom is like the third date business meeting, but now it's become like the norm. Right. <laughs> so, uh, exactly. so yeah, last time we talked about acting for a cause, which you know I'm obsessed with, but I think today I'd really like to discuss some of your other entrepreneurial ventures, especially the fact that you're a real estate investor and you have been um, for a while now and you're not, you know, you're not a seasoned, you're a seasoned real estate investor, but you're not like you're not old, you've been doing this since, since you've been young. And I think um, for our uh, demographic, for our age group and our, you know, I think it's important to discuss the power of real estate investing and the fact that that's something that anyone can really get into uh, and the importance of real estate. Because I think it's a good kind of um, asset that people need to start looking at, especially people our age, which I don't think they are. So can you tell us a little bit about your experiences doing that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the real estate world is certainly it, it's uh, you you can invest real estate kind of anywhere, uh, wherever you live, and um, and each market is very different. Um, and uh, and I own property in Chicago and in Indiana, in the neighboring states. Um, so in and around the Chicago land area in Illinois and in Indiana. Um, and I got like you said in it very young. Um, I'm curious, are you, so I, I, you mentioned yourself as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. or do you have experience in real estate? Are you someone who's just like really interested in the world of real estate, but focused on other ventures? Yeah, or I think, um, uh, so with my company, Star Baby Enterprises, we straddle the line between like production and marketing. So we've had, my first client out of college, I was a freelance graphic designer right out of college. And my first client was a, in a real estate, um, um, a real estate, he was, yeah, he was a realtor. And he did like million dollar listings. And then I've, over the course of the, the last couple of years, of course, the decade of me working for myself, uh, I've had a lot of clients that are mortgage brokers and do hard money loans and, and you know, fix and flip loans and all those great buzzwordly loans and say, income no doubt all the fancy you know buzzwordy loans and being around that world the last three years now I think it's so fascinating I knew that last year I was really excited that I wanted to get into real estate investing so it's something that I've been passionate about and I've talked to some of my friends about because to me it's about building a legacy and an empire and real estate is something that you know, I've watched my parents get into, I've watched some of my friends get into, and now someone like you that I, I admire so much, I think it's great to kind of see that you've been able to make it for yourself. And I know that you have a very specific niche that you focus on, but I think as a whole, real estate investing is a conversation that needs to be had with uh, millennials. <laughs> yes, yeah, totally. Um, and, and our generation certainly hasn't harnessed the power of um, tangible assets. Um, mm -hmm. I I think that, that in, in reality, like investing hasn't been an option for, for kids our age because um, I think that, you know, the, the clear difference between our generation and past generations is college and college debt. Yeah. Um, and that a lot of people, you know, some people have the, the luxury of having their parents sponsor their college or they get a full ride. Um, but there's an interesting, I think that it's both that and the uh, commitment that colleges uh, People used to be able to work jobs and go to college. I think that it's also that college kind of has become or developed a culture where you can't really work and go to college and be a successful mm -hmm. student. You have to completely focus on it. So those four years or eight years or 12 years 
um, those are kind of um, they are uh, your your life is on pause. Um, I had the luxury of because I was an artist, I decided to go directly into the arts from high school, mm -hmm. and it was my last semester of high school, and I got very very fortunate. I was in a a show that was um, on what's called Broadway in Chicago. Um, so it's the same seating uh, arrangement that, uh, or the same classification as what happens in New York. Um, and it's usually touring shows, but occasionally there'll be original Chicago content I got uh, into, in on that in high school. And, uh, and so I took um, my college money and invested that. And in short, that's how I got started. Certainly there's, uh, a whole journey that took place after investing the first reserves, um, but it was uh, it was really uh, cool that I didn't inherit like an insane amount of money. It was kind of like the same standard investment that any kid puts in at that age, but most people put it into their education. Um, and instead, I think I got a more valuable education than maybe some of my peers. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you said that you have folks that you work with that are specifically like brokers on luxury real estate. That was my understanding. Is that correct? Yeah, I would say that, um, you know, living in New York, I think of entertainment of a course is a huge, huge uh, industry, right. but I would say the housing market market is huge. Um, I, you know, I worked with lots of realtors because realtors, they all need graphic designers and, but going into and meeting people that were in, that were loan officers and, uh, you know, that I like one of the companies I work with, they're one of the leading nationwide hard money lenders. So I work with a lot of hard money lenders and, um, you know, just the, I think it's exciting. It's an exciting world. Obviously it's a, it's a little bit of a dirty world for those because everyone thinks about 2008, but I, I think that it's a really exciting world. To me, it's equally as fast paced as what I consider the advertising world or the entertainment industry. There's a lot of learning to be had. There's so many different factions between like a conventional mortgage for the person that wants like the, the white picket fence house versus someone who wants like a multi-unit building or they want to, you know, have it as a longer investment. Like, what are you getting into? Uh, I think it's just an exciting industry. And I think what people re don't realize, like most investments, people think they need to have everything to throw into a pot to make it happen when there's right. other options available to you. Granted, people need to do their research about who they're working with as lenders in any capacity, in any field. But I think that you know there's a lot to be said about learning about what it means to invest, what that means and defines you as an investor, uh, what relationship you have with the person that you're getting a loan from, whether it's a bank or a lender who works with the fund. Um, there's just a lot to be learned about it. So I think you know, for me, it's exciting. And what I would love to learn from you is what inspired you to get into that field? Yeah, um, so I think that a huge inspiration, I grew up with, um, my mom is an immigrant from Argentina and it was just myself and my mom. It was kind of like uh, anyone who grows up in that situation, only child, but also single parent. Um, the dynamic is, it's slightly different. Um, it's kind of like this, uh, it's us against the world sort of mentality. Um, and that was uh, really motivating, I think. Um, I think that, that uh, a lot of people become their parents. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, oftentimes, edu right, so, so education is not limited to your community. In fact, I think it's like 10% community, 90% what your uh, like immediate household looks like, um, with some variations, obviously. But um, my mom was very hardworking. Uh, she was an educator. Um, and, uh, and then we saw people who were less motivated than us doing real estate. Um, mm -hmm. and that was a pretty big open door. Uh, and so we, um, my, my mom, basically she bought our home, which was a condo in Chicago and then bought another condo, uh, when I was growing up. And that was, that's, I think that, uh, those two things, seeing other people than seeing my mom do it on a small scale. Uh, set the stage that um, we reasoned, especially if I was going to go into the arts and maybe be a starving artist, that it would be good to buy something a complex that could, if if I take care of it while I'm an artist, could take care of me uh, financially, okay. um, because that that certainly is something to think about, especially early in your career. Um, we did a traditional uh, loan 
Uh, at the time, I didn't realize, you know, you learn a lot of things about real estate and, and there's certainly way too much to encapsulate in, you know, 20 minutes. <laughs> but <Right. laughs> um, what we decided, I mean, there's, there's pretty much a decision that people make, like, if you don't have time and you're interested in real estate, you can basically go on a joint venture with people and you're just money. Um, and that's almost like dealing with the bank or buying stocks. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very hands off um, in the simplest, uh, simplest way of putting it. Um, and then there's other people who go into being a broker and they're the middleman in transactions. And there's others that go and flip houses and sell them. Um, and so they, they constantly, um, they, they buy a home for you know, a set amount, they put a set amount in to increase its value. And then whatever the difference is between what they sell it for in the end and what they spend it is their, their revenue. And in our case, it was um, the fourth one that I haven't talked about, which is just buying, you, doing some renovations, but holding it and keeping it for monthly rent, um, which is the most hands-on, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, and the most, um, the most like a traditional business in which you become attached to the properties and in the same way attached to the business. Um, it's the most like, um, so if flipping is being a producer where you're going from project right. to project, um, owning real estate and holding is like being the studio um, and, mm -hmm. and running the studio. So it's the most business oriented. And uh, I pretty much realized pretty quickly how, um, while it seems very complicated, it's actually very simple. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if you put a lot of time and love into it, um, and are motivated for the right reasons, I think is, is an important thing to know. Um, then you can uh, you you can grow that real estate portfolio pretty quickly with the use of what you said loans, um, and with the right lenders that believe in you and see you, um, see you succeed. Um, and they you know banks want to lend money. They want good they want good clients. Um, that will pay them interest. And so um, developing that relationship with the bank was very, very important, very central to my progress. Um, and uh, it went from a three flat to, you know, 10 properties to 20. And, you know, it's, it's an increasing portfolio that kind of every day I'm looking at new things and always trying to find the right deal for my for, for me and for what my life looks like at the moment. I love everything you just said, especially how you compared uh, producing to the real estate market, because I think that all the time. I think that, you know, one lesson that I'm so grateful that I've learned that you've obviously learned is the power of passive, passive income and the power of having assets. And I think that's such a lesson that a lot of people in our generation like are not aware of. We waste so much time. One second. Someone was calling me. Um, we waste so much time on the the fact that we live paycheck to paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. We're so worried about like what's the we just I get money so I could buy this and then I got to work again to buy this. We don't think of what are our long term goals. What's the long game in our life? I think you know from ten years from now, what kind of assets do we have? What kind of legacy? What kind of income? Real estate to me is so fascinating, and I use the way that people at um, uh, produce and like build the same way as real estate. Like I, for my, the networks that I create to me, they're all real estate assets. You could build networks and they have different units and those units you can rent out for money and they build and they have, you know, they grow and grow and grow and they have little ecosystems. That's why I think that in the real estate industry is so fascinating to me. To me, it's very similar and synergistic to um, the entertainment industry. And I think it's so fascinating how much you've been able to accomplish at such a young age because you've been looking at what can I do to invest to give myself a future versus what do I need to do now to just make sure that I have money now? I think it's a really great lesson. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that, that to add to that point, mm -hmm. I think that uh, um, a lot of the people who don't own real estate are the people who should. Um, I think that a lot of people put themselves in a corner where they feel like um, it's like they don't deserve to save money and work towards the long term. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that a lot of people who have like lofty goals about what the, the world should look like, you know, I'm very passionate about nonprofits and activism yeah. and acting for a cause. The other project we spoke about on this podcast was in a huge part um, motivated by that. And quickly with real estate, I realized that I could um, 
it's a world that, that like any world, it's um, it has its own problems, uh, and uh, and you can be the change you want to see in the world. I wanted to be um, a landlord that helped give opportunities to people who typically wouldn't. Um, I especially am passionate about helping single mothers uh, because that was something I grew up with, and uh, and so, and I wanted to fund nonprofits that I was passionate about, and so I let that be a motivator to work, you know, harder to find more properties and grow as quickly as possible. And and I think that that was a uh, central to the growth that I experienced. Um, but it all started with buying one property, learning, uh, experiencing. I you know a lot of people talk in general terms like experiencing failure, but I think it's always like just like any job um, or producing like you. It's these day to day challenges that each individual one isn't necessarily like terrible, but you know, as a combination, it's pretty draining. And so it's mm -hmm. really easy to kind of like lose morale. Um, and so that kind of uh, resilience, um, you don't have to have it when you first come in, but you have to develop it over time. And, uh, and I think that informs everyone in everyone's careers. Um, as that same resilience that I developed as a real estate uh, owner, um, then translated when I said, you know, I'm not acting right now, but I sure can produce um, mm -hmm. work in Chicago and, uh, and basically combine those two passions to produce um, and, uh, and continue to do so. So, um, you know, with, in your particular situation, you mentioned you were more and more interested in real estate this past year. Um, so, and, and working with brokers, do you see yourself um, do you, I don't know if this is, this is a, this is a pretty specific question to you. No, please are, ask away. <laughs> right. Are you uh, like currently looking at shifting money within your own portfolio, um, money that you would put into producing a project? Um, are you looking to like, are you starting in the saving portion right now? Like how soon are you making a decision to go into? I think that it's a, it's two things. I, I think this entire experience in COVID, I'm yeah. going to be sick of saying that word probably like three months, COVID times, the times of COVID, we'll write my memoir, um, right? <laughs> I think for for me, it was a very big awareness, the fact that I was, I was very conscious and it was like screaming at me, all the assets that I had, if I had no money and I couldn't leave my house, which a lot of us couldn't, right? Couldn't leave my house, couldn't make a right. phone call, didn't know. Like, luckily I work, you and I work for ourselves. So we are, you know, we go on our computer every day. We're hunting for business every day. It's not like a, I don't have to right. go to a place where I know my boss is going to tell me what I do today and then I'm going to deliver. Right. Um, so when I real when I, when I finally realized like, oh, I have all this time now to finish these things. Well, these are assets and projects. Well, okay. So I have this business and then I have my network, which I want to build up because I want that to give me money. And then the, the idea that, you know, the most successful people in the world, they have seven forms of income. So real estate to me is one of those big and like big places that I've always wanted to get involved with. Um, in terms of where I am in my portfolio of finance um, and funds, I would say I'm in probably the saving portion because I've decided that I wanted to change the way I do business to be more right. lean and also delegate and be effective. So then I could spend my time and energy looking at real estate investing because to me it's it's multiple things like i would love to own a studio one day but the question to me the question i have is will we have studios the way they are like a lot of these great independent studio places i'd rather give money to them and support them because they're supporting the arts i don't need to have that do i want to have a right. building or a unit do i want to be like my parents who have condos there are so many different options but I think that the real estate market is one place that I really saw a lot of changing in. I mean, put it this way, I could probably have invested in a, uh, an apartment, a condo in Manhattan right now with what's going on in COVID, how the, the trends have changed. But like what mm -hmm. people don't know is that even though the prices have gone down, you have to look at the mortgages and what the mortgage means. And then at the same time, the kind of building, who owns the building rights? And then if you want to rent in Manhattan, they're, you know, they're having this great deals on renting but the, what you don't, when you, you don't look at the fine print and you look only at the, oh, it's the, the monthly cost has dropped down a thousand dollars. Well, they're correlate they're you know, they're, they're shaving it off, but expecting you to start out at that rent. Like it, there's so many right. interesting things. And because this was such a huge disruptor in this particular space and living in a metropolitan city where that's such a huge 
source of income for right. Man, for Manhattan and tourism is down, I really just been watching. So I'm saving and observing to see what the best path and the kind of investor I want to be right now. Is. I love that. I love that. Um, and it's it's going to be the opportunity to invest is not just right now. Obviously, right now, there are some great investment opportunities. Um, there always are investment yes. opportunities. It's mm -hmm. harder to find certain times to be, you know, uh, within a decade, it, things always will go like this. But it's always on an upward trend. So mm -hmm. there's always everything can be an investment. It's a question of how good it is. Um, and uh, there's just more good investments that will be present now. But you know, the consequences of now will be seen in the next few years. So you'll have, oh, totally. um, and you know, it's, uh, I think that my kind of parting wisdom is I think that people who want to be in real estate or are cut out for it will do it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I always, I always do like to focus on the ethical part of it. I think it's super important to, um, to think about not just, I think that, that people will always be financially successful by owning and running real estate. Mm -hmm. How does one um, take real estate and um, over time make the world a better place? I think that's mm -hmm. always the, the mentality, same with the arts. How do we make yeah. the world a better place by creating? Um, and uh, it's, it's super important to look at what people, um, what practices people criticize and try to um, on as small of a scale, even if you own one condo, you know, put those um, ideals in practice. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for, for me, it's been uh, forming a, a really positive one on one relationship with everyone I work with, um, applying the same skills that I do as a producer and being um, in being, uh, I think, outwardly passionate and listening to others. And making sure that I'm not, you know, of course, you, you don't want to be a pushover and someone that gets taken, mm -hmm. taken advantage of as a real estate owner. Um, but but being compassionate uh, within a set of boundaries that both the tenant and the landlord agree upon uh, mm -hmm. is, is just very, very important. Um, and, uh, and not to play the system, but to uh, change the system. Uh, I so agree. Always, yes. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. I think you said so many beautiful points just there. I, I think it's beyond just like the arts and real estate. I think any business as a whole, I mean, the entire reason I decided to work for myself is that I wanted to, I saw so many people that I support and I love and I was inspired by get taken advantage of in a very, and like in all markets have those people. It's not every, I know a lot of people because it's entertaining to look at the faulties of entertainment. Like it, it, we like looking at the flaws and the who's doing what and everything. But I think as a whole, the arts is such a emotion, an emotional thing. And there's a lot of love behind it. And I've seen some people get taken advantage of because it's a very, it's a hard business, like all hard businesses. Like if, if I was passionate about sports, it'd be the same way. If I was passionate about advertising, it'd be the same way. If I was passionate about, you know, having a restaurant chain, it'd be the same way. I think that, you know, people like us who look at being the shepherd of a big massive ship and like being the person that people look up to and want to guide and grow with it's our due diligence to inspire others to do well and not and also in, and continue paying it forward but i think it's about giving opportunity half the, the the most joy i get is not about the paycheck we all want to make money it's a means of money is a medium of exchange and to me money is a symptom of success if you do a good job you're going to make money um, but it's about the rewarding payoff of like giving my friends opportunities, finding people that really just needed that chance, whether that be, you know, someone like I have a girl right now who's a, she just graduated college. Her whole world has just blown up because the fact that, you know, the, like I have so many interns, I love them, but their whole learning experience is completely disrupted. I feel awful for them. So I try to give, empower them by giving them tools and training them that they can take it if they stay with me or they take it to the next job or the next thing. Because I want them to know how to change the world and have their voice heard and inspire others and, and send the message along. Because that's what we're here for. There are more than enough opportunities and ways to do good, um, whether it's just be built. Community is everything. And I think that one thing that's been really highlighted is, um, not to keep going back to COVID times, but that's what we're living in right now. Como said a really good thing when this all started. He said, in chaos, people will really show their true colors. Right. And I think the best thing we could do is show the fact that community is everything and we're all having the same issues. So if I see someone less fortunate than I, 
I want to help bring that person up because I know that I go home, I sleep in my bed and I get to feed myself and they not might be able to because their job is gone or they just hit on hard times. I know people that have thrived in, in this period of time because they've connected to their community and we've been able to do stuff. So same with you. I mean, acting for a cause, throw, like decided to throw, that's not even a word. <laughs> grew and became amazing because the fact it was for a good cause and it also brought people together to push the message of a good cause and I think if you're being authentic and you're planning on helping grow and provide opportunities big and small in any industry that's what we should be striving for 100 percent. and I you know Jordan I'm a firm believer in karma I think that karma is uh you know, well, whether I'm a believer or not, it, it always uh, shows its face to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so I, I think that, you know, when I, when I talk about being both in the business world and the arts, which uh, all, you know, couldn't be more different, couldn't be more the same in this paradoxical mm -hmm. way. Um, I, I've been very fortunate that because I let idealistic motivations guide me through the world of business, I think that I've had uh, idealistic results in, you know, in the arts and, and acting for a cause being the pinnacle of it, because, you know, the fact that, you know, every project that I've done before then, um, working with, you know, different, uh, working with Second City, with Steppenwolf, with, um, uh, I, I worked with uh, hip hop artists in the Chicagoland area and in, in all these different opportunities that I took to produce. Um, never was there one that was more uh, focused on the act of giving as acting for a cause because not it wasn't just the audience members giving to the charities, but the actors giving their time for free, um, you know, that they could be could be spent on vacation or relaxing and they have every right to do that. And yet they pulled, you know, uh, a few hours from their day on a Friday to read a play out loud for uh people who you know see it scrolling through instagram it's like just that that generosity um i hope that putting it into the world uh brings more out of it and that mm -hmm. that circles and eventually take generosity takes over um what a much better world it would be if everyone was more generous uh covid 19 mm -hmm. wouldn't be an issue yeah i i agree solid. i think that you highlighted so many amazing points and, and you are so um, active, which I really like seeing because you are very outspoken. You talk about what you're passionate about. You talk about the importance of giving. And I think that you use your platform and your social platform to inspire. It's not just about what I drink for coffee today. It's about, you know, doing what, if I show this picture, how many people are going to see it? And if I write a message on top, how can I make my message be heard and who am I impacting with this? You know, I think that people, you know, when, when we start different business adventures, whether they're creative ventures or they're other uh, entrepreneurial ventures, at the end of the day, we're all hoping to become successful, but then we're also hoping to grow. And when you grow, you invite more people in and you want to become successful because you want to help feed those people. And, you know, you want them to be able to thrive and them to be able to grow and build and build. And you want to help provide legacies for people. So I think that, um, just, I'm so amazed by everything that you do. It's been such a breath of fresh air in a sea of so much negativity. It's it's really exciting. And I also say, I'm also an only child, so I understand yeah. the need. I didn't know that. Right? Hey. I, hey, I feel, and, and my, uh, my father's first generation American, so all my relatives are like all oh. Eastern European. So to me, I understand that immigrant mentality because like my, my grandfather was a bellhop at the St. Regis and that uh, he loved that job. And wow. I, and he met all the people. He met Salvador Dali. He used to make fun of Salvador Dali's paintings. And my grandfather was a painter and Salvador Dali gave him his easel. So I have Salvador Dali's easel at my parents' house. And but the but thing about him was just the fact he was so nice and he loved what he did. And he knew that when he did it, he wanted to make sure people felt good. And he was a Holocaust survivor. So it's like, how can you bring that? How can you go from such negativity, come here and just be grateful to be alive and doing things? and how much of a change you made that people respond to it. And I think if we just took that lesson, which I think you've really showcased to how you can make a simple change, whether it's just saying hello yeah. or being nice, or like, I, I love the fact like how is real estate impacting the livelihood of in a grander scheme of things and like focusing on that message. That's such a great lesson to learn. And I really hope that people take that from this interview. 
Thank you, yes. Um, you know, one note to jump off of that, a little uh, short story. I was- We love uh, stories here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I thought, I, I think with all the general talk, I, I should put one, at least one uh, story in here. Definitely. I was seeing uh, Ram and Ari Emanuel, who uh, in a sense are both sides. I, I don't agree with everything that they do or say, uh, but Ram in the business and political world, uh, he was mayor of Chicago and Ari Emanuel is the uh, founder of uh, William Morris Endeavor. Mm -hmm. um, which is uh, WME is and CAA are like the two biggest. <laughs> They're the juggernauts for all those out there who don't know who they are. <laughs> um, in the representation industry and even in creating shows. Um, so they were they were talking about uh, a project that was pitched to Chicago, to, to Chicago that needed government funds, and uh, and Rahm Emanuel was really came into this meeting uh, with a very strong doubt that he would actually move forward with this project. Um, and the person who was proposing the project mentioned at the very, very beginning of, of um, his speech or, or whatever he was going to be delivering that he was a Holocaust survivor. And Ram ended up just asking him questions about his own life the whole time, not about the project. And the guy was like, look, I, I love to talk about my life. He, he talked about it, but like we, we need to spend some time talking about the project. And Ram said, no, the, the, the project's approved because he knew that this man would, having gone through hardship, um, and come out uh, representing his own values and ideals and uh, and changing countries and all the things that come with being a survivor, um, that he would uh, execute this project as it needed to be done. Um, so that's that's a little story um, I that, that I think I, I, I very recently and it was it was certainly special to hear. I, I love that. And I think that just goes to say that, you know, being authentic with your own personal story and the reasons why you do things, even if they're good or bad, just be authentic. And I think the more authentic that you are and the more truthful that you are, you'll attract those kind of people and people will believe in you. I think it's important to just tell your truth. I think so many people put on these facades and a lot of it is because of social media, but we've been able to flip social media on its head and during this time. And I think it's great to be able to connect and impact and have Zoom meetings. <laughs> so, right. you know. Yeah. Kudos to, to you, to everyone who is uh, trying to stay active and creative during this time. Um, I uh, support your podcast and oh, thank uh, you. definitely, I think that next Friday, which I don't know when this, the, this podcast will be put out. Um, so is it before next I'll Friday or after? I'll make it go out next before next Friday. That's fine. I'll make it happen. Okay. It's gonna go on. Everything's gonna happen after Yom on. Kippur. I'm gonna have a guilt right, trip right. Sunday night. I'm gonna be parents all day Monday, and then Tuesday I'll make sure some things go up. But Perfect. Yeah. I mean, all all what I was saying was that it's I believe it's next Friday that the um, the show with um, Eric. What is it called? Yes. Yes. To the point with Eric Mitchell. Point with Eric Mitchell will be airing. So check yeah. that out on YouTube and on TV. Yeah, on big TV. All right. Very right, cool. Thank you for everything. You are such a lovely person. I hope to meet you in person one day. Yeah. <laughs> Not we masks and gloves and all. Um, we'll be right, having a good guys. time. Thank you for constantly inspiring us, and I look forward to what's to come. Yay! Thank you, Jordan. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you. Cool. All right.